welcome to Backyard Science. My name is Marilyn. I work at the Marina branch of the Monterey County Free Libraries and today we will be looking at another Bat Bonanza video in honor of the spookiest time of the year. We will recap some bat facts from the last video that I did about bats. Uh, we'll look at some more bat footage that I took and we will learn how scientists research bats and let you pretend to be a science scientist yourself. If you didn't see our first bat video, you should know that bats are the only mammal capable of flight under their own power, and their wing structure enables them to maneuver better than birds to catch their predominantly insect prey. Because bats have a membrane that stretches across almost like bone fingers in their wings, this enables them to independently move parts of their wings and cup the air and push it and maneuver it in ways that birds are not able to with their feathers. And that's how bats are able to swoop and dive and swerve as nimbly as they do. Since they are nocturnal, meaning they come out at night, insect eating bats use echolocation to detect prey during the night. Echolocation is emitting a high frequency sound that bounces off the surrounding objects and then comes back to the bat and forms a picture that the bat can see with its brain from that kind of input and it lets them see their surroundings and hunt. Uh, they love moths and all any kind of flying bug that they can get at night. They they eat enough insects to reduce the need for pesticides and their dung can be used for fertilizer. Because they congregate in colonies, their guano gathers in a lot of places and so it's easy to gather it. Um, here is some footage that I took in August. Uh, some of it is slowed down, but you can really see how nimbly they fly. a video by USGS or United States Geological Survey which is an organization that does research around all kinds of animals and plants in the US and helps scientists manage their um, the environment around them and this video lets you be a bat biologist I know lots of movies and books glamorize what it is to be a scientist uh, but a lot of work of scientists is sitting and absorbing and writing things down. So they, scientists gather data that represents the larger populations of something as best that they can. For example, if they want to know how many bats roost all over California, they might do a count like this one on a few colonies and then they can kind of estimate or extrapolate how many colonies are in the area and then from there figure out how many bats are in California. But that, again, that's an estimate because it, it would be impossible for, the, for them to sit and count every single bat. And the same can be applied for many other kinds of animals as well. Now, for this video, you will need a pencil or pen and a piece of paper. This is looking at a roost in a house in Point Reyes National Seashore, California, which is um, further north. And it is looking at the Townsend's big-eared bat and in this one you will be counting the number of bats leaving the roost and also entering the roost and that will tell you how many bats are there as a bat leaves you will make a tick mark and then as it enters and at the very end once you once the video stops you will subtract entering from leaving and that will give you the total number of bats that are in the roost so again that number will be 
So it takes a leaving minus minus entering and that will give you the total. Ooh. I have to film that in a second. So here is the video and good luck counting. So, how many bats did you see? The, again, this kind of thing can be applied to many species, uh, from trees to animals. Uh, again, a lot of a lot of science is figuring out how many things are in a population and where they are and their behavior, and figuring out, and that lets you know a lot about how the population of the species is doing. And that's one way that science can be applied um, in this way. Um, in this way, scientists gather data to support hypotheses that they make about biological populations, and this helps them make decisions around environmental management and conservation. The USGS website has a lot of other neat videos, so I hope you get a chance to check some of them out. Well, that's all for this Bat Bonanza sequel. I hope you enjoyed being a scientist and seeing a bit about how they work. Be sure to check out all the cool spooky content on the MCFL social media and have fun exploring other things about how researchers do their jobs. Take care and see you next time. Bye.